My name is Ann Smith, and this program is called Africans United of New England. I'm here today with my guest and my partner in working in nonprofit organizations, Anthony Bazia. And we're going to talk today about um, your future. If you're watching and you're a refugee or the child of a refugee, an asylum seeker, or maybe you were born here uh, and you're the 10th generation um, American, uh, we're still going to talk about your future because I've done a bit of research and Bazia and I have done quite a lot of talking about the problem of choosing what you want to do with your life, particularly in the way of work, getting an education that works for you but that doesn't leave you in incredible debt and confusion. Um, I want to start, however, by talking, asking Basia today to talk a little bit about um, his first job. I know you can talk about this even though I didn't warn you. Um, I want you to tell them about your job in Egypt when you were doing such an interesting job as a young man helping to run cruises. Yeah, um, the Egyptians, I mean, there's a, a Red Sea, you know, a lot of this country they would visit, and then plus they uh, would do a pyramids. It's kind of a used to everybody loved uh, to go to Egypt to see. Right, all the tourists. All the tourists and Moses. It's kind of a mixed story. I mean, uh, Bible a little here, a little bit of the sea. The Red Sea have different, different flavor. Because we used to do a ship, you can be under the water. The ship is going, but you can see the other glass fish. Glass bottom? Yeah, glass bottom. You see the other fish, you see the other animal, whatever you want to call it, underwater. And then you can take some picture. You have a camera, you can shoot any picture you have. So that's one of the things. A lot of people from Middle East, a lot of people from Italy, even the United States, Australia, they would come to have a good time in the summer. And you had a specialty. You worked for the man who owned the company with all the cruise ships, uh, once for the Nile as well as the Red Sea, right? Yeah, uh, the hotel called uh, Siaj Paramus. Siaj Paramus is a big uh, family in Egypt and they are owned by one area called uh, Giza. It's kind of, a, if I say... I think Giza. Yeah, something. Mm -hmm. um, so these people, they have them all cars, land, land cruiser, they do safari. Oh, they did safaris too. Yeah, we do uh, a full cruise. We can take 200, we can take 500 people. We do food in, 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 in different places. So you lived on the, you lived on the cruise ship. Right. And you went on this Right, experience. so all this is, is part of it. And then they used to operate with uh, Hollywood. If somebody requests, uh, like Argada is, is a place that's all tourists. Uh, Sharm el Sheikh, uh, of the Eustor of Jesus when he left Egypt and going through oh, Israel. So if you wanted a special right. special tour of a special group. Right, we can, we can take a contract, because we take a contract by the group. So a, say a church group wanted to see uh, uh, the parts along the Nile where Moses might have gone, gone with, through the, with the Holy Pete, with the, uh, you know, when they were leaving, when they were having their diaspora That's from correct. Egypt. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, but uh, your specialty, I know you mentioned this to me also, the part I think that maybe you enjoyed the most was occasionally you got to man and command a ship that all the people on the ship were children. Yeah, the one of the things, you know, I don't know if anybody watching this um, show, when you are adult and you try to remember when you're a child, not just to remember, when you get a chance to work with the kids, it, 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 it brings something in the back of your brain, like a movie. Oh, I was one of them, but today I'm not one of them, but I'm trying to see was my time that and then them, them time. And this is all, almost happened to everybody. If, it's, if you're a man, if you're a woman, you're gonna look at the little girl. When I was a little girl, I was like this. If I was a boy, I would say, oh, when I was a little boy, like this. So it's kind of amazing. It, it, it brings you back to your memory of your childhood. And, and this is one of the reasons 
I used to enjoy to work with the kids because nobody born big, everybody born little and grow, <laughs> you know. But sometimes the only difference between me and other people, I'm not saying I'm special, but when somebody became a doll and he forget he was a child, was a child, and that for me, he looked like a little bit. That's confused. actually kind of sad when you think about it. Yeah, but some people do, according to when when you don't give a value, or you're talking with a child. It's like ignoring them another way. I feel that way, this is me. But I almost feel I was a child. I don't born big. I, I'm going to tell our audience a secret. Yeah, so. He's still a child. So You are still a child in many ways. <laughs> I mean, I've known this man for quite a few years. And uh, I think that's one of the nicest things about somebody you know is when you know the child in them, too. Uh, it hasn't gone away, that part of them. Um, now I'm going to ask you a slightly unusual question. I don't think you've, I've asked you this before. How did you get that job in the first place? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a person uh, since I can start when I was nine years old. I almost believe, I never feel I want to work under anybody, but sometimes I work, but I almost I believe I can create my own thing. So you can create a job. Yeah, because I'm a child who born, I want to be my own boss when I was even young. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm good at one thing. I can go somewhere, and I used to use this example. When you go to the party, do not dance. I will sit down. I don't care which kind of language those people speak, but I can find out what is wrong and what is good, what I can do, what I cannot do. So you're an observer. You That's start by observing. That's me. Okay. When I went there, situation. Uh, the first thing they give me the job because I have different skill of travel, and on oh, top of that, oh, you had traveled a lot. Yeah. And on top of that, I speak different language, and especially Egyptian Arabic. I was good on it. It's just like if I'm talking in the radio, you're not seeing me. You can say, "Well, this guy is Egyptian," because and I learned that too through the radio. And that's why I love radio. Radio is about you are target one person, but the TV is different. You don't know how many people are watching you, but the radio almost target of one person. So when I was there, I was just trying. So you were there in Cairo, which you had been, you had traveled to Cairo before. You were familiar with the city. Yeah. Um, and uh, you went, how did you find out there was a job? I'm just curious about what it's like on another continent when you're jobless. What do you do? Yeah, one of the things, <laughs> I go back to my, my own design. I love hotel. Uh, all these places, sometimes uh, I can live with my parents or my cousin who have good job, and a lot of them have job under the embassy. But I'm a child since I was young. I love hotel. One of the things I love hotel you will have good attention. I love attention. <laughs> I don't need to worry about to fix the bed. I don't need to worry about the food. Everything is there. And then you pay only one bill, you cover everything. But if you stay in an apartment, you want to pay the house separate, I just like feel right. that's the way I meet people who are important. OK, so while you were in the hotel, you met the man who owned this, or at least he was also. I was in the same hotel. That's where we met. And, and did he stay there, or did he just? He come have no, no. He stayed there. Okay. Even his own uh -huh. family, they have a suite. A suite. Yeah. Okay. Complete one part of the all circus. Okay. And he blocks. ran this business, his business, yeah. which was cruises and Not other kinds of tourist attractions. Yeah. Okay, and. Um, did you just, so did you get someone to introduce you to him? Uh, this waitress was in the hotel when I was in a dinner and I met part of the family was have dinner. And I'm a guy, wherever I go, I have my own designer, Nick, and he, he was interested to know who's this guy. He noticed you because, yeah, probably so because of the way you dressed. I uh, introduced myself and he was like, what do you do? I said, I do this, I do this and then. He said, I feel like we can talk. I said, maybe not today, maybe other time. So he gave me the business card, and then uh, one week later, we met with the manager, and I was and able to get a job. And you got that job. And then on top of that, I already did a flavor to, to add something new 
for the job when you come for the for the kids i'm the one came up with the idea of the kids because there was people come from europe come from where they don't have program for the kids for the adult okay they just focused on the adults because yeah. they were the ones paying the bills right. so i said well why not we can create a new idea and even we we get to the point we teach the kids to have uh, the other crews, you can be have the the pump of the uh, the air on your bag. You can get under the water. Oh, so they could try. You mean uh, they could try scuba diving? It's scuba dive. We, oh, do, wow. we did that. We did a special program for the kids. Wow. And the kids love that when they came. And they then did. we have uh, more than twelve. If, if I say we we we're, we're putting three kids down, we will make sure there's other adults around them. Because it's a new thing. I know thing you're always very concerned about yeah, safety. Yeah, it's uh, safety. So. Okay. The reason I ask these questions is that I'm trying to point out that this is a gentleman who has uh, done a number of things that he and I have talked about, are things that are eventually going to be very important for you, whoever you are who's watching, to pay attention to when you think about your lifetime of work. And I'm using those words, lifetime of work, for a very specific reason. I think you should take out a pencil and paper someday and sit down and figure out how much time of your life is going to be spent working, whether it will be for yourself or for somebody else. Because let's face it, folks, you can't get very far in this world unless you inherit a huge fortune without any money. Uh, it's wonderful to think that we have a purpose in life that's more important than making money, but unfortunately in the reality of things, you have to make some money in order to um, take care of yourself and eventually fulfill whatever purpose it is that you have. And that means you need to know a couple things. First of all, you need to know yourself. You need to know what you like. Um, in Africa, if a child is decide, growing up and he's deciding what he or she wants to do with his life or her life, um, who makes those decisions? A lot of time the parents make decisions, but uh, I want to add one thing very important before I, I, I make decision. And I wish if they were thinking about timing. And I think I see many parents uh, Okay, when you say you want to be a doctor, if I just say, United States take 12 years, maybe I can say Africa take eight years. But they never think about them age, parents. Who's age? The, the parents, because whatever I look at it, I look at it like in United States, you buy a house for 100,000, USA or 200,000, they will tell you, this house be finished for 35 years. That's right. That's so home. imagine if I'm 45 or 40 or 30, uh, life really, the truth, life is all about number. If you're in the life, are you dead? Still. <laughs> That's right. In between, there's a lot of numbers. Yeah, everything is all a number. But I'm trying to mention something here. The parents never see that, a lot of the other parents. For me, I get a chance. They allowed me to be who I am, but it doesn't mean that's the right thing. Maybe it's for other people that are not the right thing. They think the parents are supposed to decide for you to be. So a lot of them, they want to be a doctor, they want to be an engineer. And even when they say engineer, they don't even be specific. What kind of engineer? Yeah. There's a lot of different it, kinds. Yeah, it's, it's just a word open. And just like when you, when you look at a freedom word, it's, it's not a small word. It's have long spelling to write freedom. Why do you think, why do you think so many African parents, and you and I know this from Bright Future, which was a group we had at Portland High School, which was new arrivals, uh, teenagers who were either born here or most of them were uh, new to this country. Inevitably, one of the questions we'd be asking in our, in our meetings was, what do you want to do in the future? What do you want to do for your life's work? And inevitably, they would say, oh, well, my parents or I think I should become a doctor or a lawyer or um, an engineer. Why do you think African parents 
focus on those three careers for the future of their children? Well, one of the things, I know that we have a lot of good number of the people who became engineers. Uh, they are good in reading and they are good in math. But it's still, for me, there is no window in Pacific Oldest Group to look at number of timing. Okay. For them, I know I can, I can, I can go back to my own family. I have a lot of my, member of my family. They love education. They like hungry about education. That's they. They keep going to school. Going, all, going, going all their lives. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm not here to be against somebody who love education, but I'm just asking a simple question. After all this education, there's something going to be end called job, J-O-B. So if you put in 20 years in education and look at your age and that education, that's how many years? On top of that, you need to look for something about uh, practice. Did you done that in school? Did you practice that field? So when you look at the field, just say you've you done education for 25 years, and there's a practice here, say, five years again, that's 30 years. So the background of Africa, I can say, colonized by British or by French, uh, I can say it very clear, there is, uh, I don't want to call it confusion, but maybe that's the one thing they know about it, because they love title, a big title. You know, and even if you see them kiss, they almost pick name of the people popular. Yep, well known, famous. Famous. Even if it's a good person or bad, they don't even care. <laughs> they just <laughs> feel witness our friend who's who was named Hitler yeah, as a Kyle. baby. Yeah. Uh, because his mother and father knew that was a very important person. They had no idea what Hitler had done in his life, but they named him that. He is now trying to change the spelling of his name to something a little bit like Hitler, but a little different because he now knows who Hitler, the original Hitler, was. Yeah, I wish whatever who was in this program, let's say, take the good thing from the past and art for the future and the better. So in this show today, we're thinking, uh, if you get to the United States and you have a background coming from Africa or Middle East or whatever country you came, please, Stay calm down a little bit, and uh, my grandpa used to do this. When you go to the party, do not dance. That's the same thing. If you came in this country, don't rush to make decision by emotion or by just you thinking that's the right thing. Uh, what I'm trying to say because the market of the job sometimes it doesn't wait for your education. That's right. The market it can change any time. If you see today the market, academic is is, is a good thing. But today, air condition, carpeting, mechanic, those are quick money, and you get it right away. And a lot of places, they're looking for this, even welding machine, or even the bridge, even right now the road, okay. the light, design of how to build a building in a better way and, 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 and safely. And, and although you can go out and get an engineering degree, that doesn't mean that you're going to be picking up tools and helping to build a skyscraper. Uh, a lot of the jobs that you see that to you look so important, so you could say someday, you know, I helped build that building, or uh, I have my own plumbing uh, concern, and that's, that's a very uh, well-paying business. Uh, or I'm an electrician, or something that's very practical that people are always going to need. Um, you don't have to go to a four-year college to get the training for those things. First of all, you can look at your local uh, community colleges, but you can also look for apprenticeships. Um, one of the things that I began doing when we were talking about uh, the incredible load of debt that people who go to four years or four years of college and then two years to get a master's, the huge number of loans they have to take out, the amount of money they have to borrow, I started looking for possible ways to get around that. Uh, and one of the things I learned was, and I was surprised, is that there are an enormous number of companies 
in the United States where you could work part-time while you're going to college and they will also help you pay your college tuition. Uh, I'm just going to grab uh, a list here. Uh, they do it two ways. One, they can give you money right up front so that you can go off to school while you're working for them. Of course, the condition is that you have to continue to work for them while you're earning your education. The other way is tuition reimbursement. Say you were to work for, you're going to be shocked, Kentucky Fried Chicken. At the end of your four years of college, they might pay you back half of the cost of your education based on your success and your grades. I just want to read our audience the names of a few companies that you already know. Starbucks, Verizon, Bank of America, Best Buy, Home Depot, Lowe's, Chipotle, Amazon, McDonald's, Target, Apple. Do I need to go on? I mean, this is a list of 36 companies. You can Google this yourself. Another section I came to had 50 different companies that, uh, including large financial corporations uh, like uh, Wells Fargo, where I finance my car. If you get a job right out of high school working for these, this company, one of the things you should be asking them as soon as you get the job which is not usually very difficult because it's an entry-level job of some kind, um, is what, what kind of programs do you have for me? I'm a student. And you would be amazed at how many of them there are out there. Um, the average cost to attend a full-time private university or college in this country is $40,000 a year, okay? That's not counting your, that's not counting your living expenses. That's just to go to school for one year. If you are going to uh, USM and you live here in Maine, it's about half that because you're a resident of Maine. But $20,000 over four years is still a huge amount of money. Yes, you can earn scholarships, but there aren't enough scholarships to pay for everybody to go to these educational facilities free. Um, so you have to be, in this country, uh, how many people would you say in, in a village of uh, 5,000 people, how many people would manage to get a college degree in Africa of that 5,000? Uh, it'd be a small number because it'd be back to the parents or so, uh, family who own money. You right. know, because um, if you're in education, I mean, the bottom line, education everywhere is expensive. That's, that's the way I look at it. There is no way, even if you see, the, I know maybe the, the money is different. Maybe say Africa using a pound, United States right, using a dollar. Right, different denominations. Uh, domination, but still education really uh, is not something free. And, and this is why a lot of uh, people who struggle in different countries even if you cannot do nothing, you, you find out they have high education. Or, uh, look at Africa. This is why two weeks ago I was talking about something very interesting. If we, if we open just in New England uh, a, a language, we can get a lot of African, one person who speaks seven languages, six languages. That's uh, economic right there. And, and that's true. Um, Africans, refugees of all kinds, already came here with some skills, even if they didn't have an education. I have yet to meet a refugee who doesn't speak at least two languages besides English. Um, we have a dear friend who used to work with us at Portland High School, um, who has now uh, gone on to start her own business. And um, when I met her, I was struck by the fact that she told me that she had worked for a particular bank in town for 11 years. And during that time, she earned her college degree. When she was hired by them, she, they didn't hire her because she had a college degree. She didn't have anything beyond high school. But she did speak French fluently. And she told me that they were looking for someone who could speak French. And so they hired her. 
Over the 11 years, she worked for them, and she liked working with them. They considered her a very valuable employee. They paid, the bank paid, for her to take the classes that she needed to take to get a degree in business, a full four year. It didn't cost her a thing except her service and loyalty to that company. Now, there, uh, that's a second kind of opportunity. I mean, we have the list here of places you can look for funding that you can go and get a job. But the other way is to make the right impression on your employer and then who knows what can happen with that. Um, I want to mention that there is a cultural event on September 4th at Merrill and uh, you're welcome to uh, take a look at it. It's going to be African drumming and percussion and dancing. Uh, for those of you who might watch this show regularly, that would be a fun program to give. I believe it's at 5.30 in the afternoon and it's a Saturday. Uh, I intend to try and bring a child I know because I think he would enjoy it very much. Um, the other thing I'd like to add to our program today, and this is obviously a subject we could talk about for hours, is that we are affiliated with the Welcome Center on 24 Preble Street and are hoping, with their help and the help of other nonprofits, to start a group called, uh, we, called what? I don't know because we've got to name ourselves, but it would be young people, uh, particularly refugees, who want to make a difference in their community and get a possible uh, step up in their own lives by getting leadership training and connections to important people in the Portland, greater Portland area. And um, here I am talking about how you can get a job and how you can get a college education and it might not cost you any money or how to find the right place for you. But you guys, you millennials, and I'm not a millennial and neither is Bazir, you guys have a skill that we need and that other people need. You know more about computers than I will ever know. And most of the information I brought to the show today, I got from my computer. But I can tell you, you would have found it a lot faster. And you would have found it a lot more easily. Um, and then when I find a job to help somebody apply, you would help them apply for the job because of your skills. So I'm urging you to get in touch with either myself or Bazir, or perhaps uh, send an email right to the Welcome Center and tell them that you are a person of, uh, from whatever country of the world, or you were born here, and you're interested in being part of the Millennial Leadership Group, because we can help you, and you can certainly help us. Um, Next month, we're going to come in, and I'm hoping that we'll have a guest next month. Uh, so either Bazir or I will interview our guest. But uh, in the meantime, be well, take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Many, many heroes.